garden pretty much all the time, sometimes well into the evening, when the only thing that drives me indoors are mosquitoes. So today I thought I'd try and build a little bit of habitat to encourage a team of mosquito-munching microbats into my garden. There are 83 species of microbat found in Australia, some weighing as little as three grams. Although you think you may never have seen one, they are really widespread. Microbats make up nearly 20% of all mammals in the world. And the great thing about them for us is that they are voracious mosquito eaters. Up to half their body weight, that means about 500 mozzies a night. So I want them in my garden. Naturally, microbats, like lots of other native creatures, make their homes in the hollows that form in really old trees. And unfortunately, there are less and less of those around. So increasingly, they're making their homes in man-made structures. And today, I'm gonna to make a couple of those. I'm gonna make one out of hardwood and another really simple design using an offcut of PVC pipe. But first, to the hardwood hollow. Because I am mimicking essentially natural conditions, I want this timber to be rough. Rough as guts, the rougher the better. And it must be untreated. You do not want to use chemically treated timbers for this. So this is going to be the backing board of my hollow. I'll build the hollow on the front here. So it's like a tree trunk. And the bats will actually land on this and crawl up into the hollow. So you need to make a landing strip. I'm going to show you how to do that. To give the bats extra grip on the landing pad and up inside the box, I'm creating a series of grooves, about three mils deep and five mils apart. Of course, you could use that for all of them, maybe even a gouge, but I think I'm gonna take a shortcut. Next, I've got to create the actual hollow, the roost for the bats to sleep in through the day. Now, because they're so tiny, they just need a tiny entrance to get in. So I've cut this timber, so there's going to be a gap, which is about the width of my thumb, about 12 millimetres. So that's small enough for the microbats to get into, but it prevents any birds or predators getting up to them. So the hinged lid is obviously not for the bats, it's actually for me. So I can check if they've actually moved in there. If something like some ants go in, I can leave the lid up and they'll go away, or I could just clean it out. So I've drilled some holes for hanging the box, but also I'm just putting a little bit of linseed oil on the outside. That's gonna help it be a bit more weatherproof, but I'm leaving the inside natural because that's for the bats. The second type of roost I want to put up is actually really simple. It's just a piece of PVC pipe that's been cut and lined with some fly screen. You could use shade cloth or old carpet, and that just provides something for the bats to actually grip onto. Again, it's got a little landing pad and the cap I've cut, so it makes a small entrance for them to crawl into. They've got another little entrance here. And then of course the top, another cap makes it waterproof. There's a few things to consider when you're choosing the position for your roost, because they've got to be really safe. And the first thing is height. If you've got a big tall tree, it is perfect, but I don't. So I'm going to experiment with this pole. It's got to be at least three metres off the ground and anywhere up to 20 metres is fine if you can get up a ladder that tall. The second thing to think about is aspects. They need quite a bit of warmth, particularly in winter, and this faces east, they're gonna get heaps of sun. But in the heat of summer, my grapevine's gonna grow up, I'm gonna train it to protect them from the western sun to keep them a little bit cooler. The other thing you need to consider is the approach. They do a really deep swoop before they land on their tree and crawl up into the roost. So I'm hoping this clear flight path is gonna be perfect. It's a bit of an experiment, this one, but I'll let you know how I go. As for this big house, I don't actually have a tree yet big enough to hang this on, so I'm going to take it to a neighbour's. To hang the bat box, I'm using some heavy-duty wire and a bit of garden hose to protect the tree. Yep. Pretty good. A small box like this can cater for lots of bats because they're tiny and they huddle together to maintain warmth and humidity. It might take them some time to discover their new digs, but keep an ear out 
and every now and then, have a little look to see who's moved in. Of course, the very best thing we can do for all of the creatures that use our gardens at night is leave our old, beautiful native trees for them and plant some new ones for the next generation. But if you want to knock up an option for them tonight, well, what about a bat B&B? &B?